So the new Dell XPS 9500 and the old Dell XPS 7590 with a four-year-old chassis design. Which one is right for you? Well, both of these are listed on the Dell website now, and both of them are getting pretty heavily discounted with Black Friday just around the corner. If you wanted an OLED screen, it's only available on the old Dell XPS, but does that really matter? I thought it did, but I was kind of wrong. And I've owned both of these laptops for quite some time now, and there are a couple things that I really think you should know if you're deciding which one to buy. And why am I in front of a fireplace? Well, I live in Canada and it's really cold up here and we're kind of in the middle of a snowstorm. So anyways, the first thing I wanna talk about is build, form factor, and the ports. So the new Dell XPS is definitely cleaner and more 2020 in terms of build and design. It's a full aluminum unibody design opposed to the old XPS, which has this rubbery tacky feeling across the sides. In terms of ports though, the old XPS is kind of the winner because it has the old legacy USB-A port and some other ports that are pretty useful to have. But the new XPS comes with two Thunderbolt ports and a USB-C port. So it also provides USB-C charging. It also has a SD card reader and a headphone jack just for kicks. And it comes with a dongle in case you need that HDMI port and the dongle is free, unlike some manufacturers. So on the spec sheet, the new XPS is not that much thinner than the old XPS, and I thought there wouldn't be too much of a difference. But take a look, there's actually a really big difference between the two chassis. And I think one of the biggest factors is because of these rubber feet on the bottom of the laptops. As you can see on the old XPS, the rubber feet protrude out quite a bit more than the new XPS, and this makes it feel a lot thicker than the new one. In terms of lid openability, the old XPS I found was very difficult to open even with two hands and don't even think about opening it with one hand. But the new XPS, as expected from a 2020 made laptop, is one hand friendly. Unfortunately for the new XPS though, there are some uneven gaps when the lid is closed. This is supposed to be the Ferrari of laptops, and Ferraris don't come with panel gaps. Another thing that you'll notice on the new XPS is that the palm rests are pretty sharp. Now, they went all out, making this a very good precision cut laptop, but because of that, the palm rests are pretty sharp. Not enough to cut you, but it's something that you notice. It's not a deal breaker though. The new Dell XPS also has a much smaller footprint, as you can see when we lay them on top of each other. And this is due mainly to the new aspect ratio. So next, let's talk about the screens of these laptops. Now, the new Dell XPS has a newer aspect ratio of 16 by 10, opposed to the 16 by 9 aspect ratio on the older XPS. This is nice because you get a little bit more real estate when you're scrolling through pages or doing your work on your laptop, but it's not nice because you get black bars when you're trying to play 4K or 1080p videos on Netflix or YouTube. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something that you do notice. Now the 1920 by 1200 resolution of the new XPS is nice, but it's not as nice as the 4K OLED display on the old XPS that I have here. You do notice a better contrast and obviously deeper blacks and whiter whites on the OLED. And you do notice that because it's a 4K display that a lot of text and other images appear a lot more clear on the 4K display. So whereas the OLED display is better overall, I would say, in terms of image quality, it does have its issues. For one, it's a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than the LCD panel, which isn't a big deal. But what is a big deal is the black banding that occurs in a lot of the movies that I watch. And as you can see here in the movie Papillon, which by the way is an amazing movie, it's on Netflix, go watch it now. In a lot of the darker scenes, a lot of the blacks seem to turn into pixelated blocks. So I did some research about this and I figured out that it's because of the Dell Color Monitor software. So if I go into the Intel Display Driver, I can reset the color calibrations and then bam, the black banding is gone. But anytime I try to mess with the brightness of the screen, the black banding comes back instantly and I'd have to go back into the program and reset the color calibration. I think this is something to do with how the Intel display driver and the Dell color calibration software is messing with each other. So I'm sure there's a way to fix this, but I haven't figured it out yet. And it's something that I do notice and it's a little bit annoying. Right, and both of these have fingerprint readers, but the new Dell XPS has Windows Hello facial recognition and I do think that that's a little bit nicer and a little bit faster because you can open the lid and it'll unlock without you even having to touch the computer. 
So yes, fingerprint readers is a perfect segue to talking about the keyboards. So the new keyboard is definitely better hands down. The keys are a little bit wider, a little bit bigger. That means I don't accidentally press the blank space between the keys. And I always used to do that with the old Dell XPS because it has these chiclet style keys that have large gaps between them. Overall, the new keyboard is much more pleasurable to type on. Also, let's talk about the function keys. So the function keys on the old Dell XPS are function keys first, and then the volume adjustments and play pause and brightness adjustments after. So you would have to hold down the FN button if you wanted to adjust the brightness or the sound. But the new Dell XPS and how it should be done is that the function keys are only activated when you hold down the FN. So if you wanted to do F1, F2, F3, you hold down the FN button and then you press F1, F2, F3. But if you wanted to adjust the brightness or if you wanted to adjust the sound or play and pause, then all you have to do is hit that button. So by default, that button controls whatever that image is. And if you wanted to use the F buttons, which nobody really does anymore, you have to hold down the function keys. And yes, both have fingerprint readers, but the new Dell XPS fingerprint reader is integrated into the keyboard. So it looks a little bit more clean than that little round cutout found in the old Dell XPS. They both work really fast though. And just look at that font on the keyboard. You can just tell that the new Dell XPS has a nice modern 2020 font and the old Dell XPS has that outdated kind of 2016 font. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the trackpad. Now, both of these trackpads work really well. The new one is just a lot bigger as to keep with 2020 trends than the old one. But as you might have seen or heard in other videos, the new trackpad is prone to this loose wobble that comes straight from the factory. And whereas maybe a lot of people have thought that the Dell Quality Control and Production line has fixed this issue by now, they haven't. Because I purchased this late in 2020 and mine has the wobble issue. Now for me, this is a deal breaker. So I will be returning this and having them send me a new one without that wobble issue. But it is worth noting that this particular model that I bought was one of those ready to ship models, which means it was probably produced way back when and just sat in their inventory. So it could have been produced earlier in 2020 for all I know. So next, let's talk specifications. Now, I don't wanna to dive too deep into the nitty gritties of the specifications, but there are a couple things that you should know if you're deciding between these two laptops. First of all, the new Dell XPS has the better NVIDIA 1650 Ti graphics versus the old Dell XPS that only has the normal 1650. Well, the TI only gives about an 8% boost in graphics performance, so it's not that big of a deal. The new Dell XPS comes with the 10th generation Intel Core i7s, and the old one comes with the 9th generation. Yes, the 10th generation one is better, but even more notably, look at that Intel sticker. The old one is the Intel sticker that we've seen for many years now, but look at that new Intel sticker. It just looks better. So to open these laptops up, what I was originally going to say is you just unscrew the torque screws in the back and you pop off the lid. Now that may be true for the old XPS, but for the life of me, I couldn't open the back panel of the new Dell XPS. So I ordered a pry tool kit that should be coming any day now, but for now you just have to trust me when I say the back panel of the new Dell XPS is really, really difficult to get off. So in terms of RAM, both of these laptops have two dual channel RAM slots but the new Dell XPS is a little bit higher frequency at 2,933 megahertz versus the old Dell XPS, which is at 2,666 megahertz. Now, both of them have M.2 storage slots, but the new Dell XPS has two M.2 slots, which means you can upgrade the storage if you're ever able to get the back panel off without having to reinstall the whole operating system because you can just snap in a new M.2 card. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about are the speakers. Now, if it wasn't for the speakers, I wouldn't really wanna switch out of the old Dell XPS 7590. But because the speakers on the old Dell XPS were just so bad, it was a deal breaker for me. It was the one thing that I just could not stand. Everything else about the new Dell XPS, I think are nice upgrades, but does it really warrant buying a completely new laptop just because of those features? For me, no. But the speakers on the old Dell XPS are nothing short of just a tin can. I, I'm pretty sure that my old HP Pavilion from 2009 had better speakers than that. My alarm clock has better speakers 
than that. If you ever plan to consume any type of media on this laptop, whether it's gaming or video editing or watching videos or something like that, then the old Dell XPS speakers are just horrible. If you're the type that wears headphones all the time when you're using your laptop, then maybe it's fine. The speakers on the new Dell XPS, on the other hand, are amazing. They're not MacBook amazing. If the MacBook Pro 16 speakers were a 10 out of 10, I would give these a 9 out of 10. And I would give the old tin can a 1 out of 10. So I did a speaker comparison, which I'm going to play for you now. But just know that the new Dell XPS speakers have pretty nice bass, they're really loud, and I even brought out my 2020 iPad Pro just for comparison. So in conclusion, these are both very capable laptops. In terms of design, I would say that the new Dell XPS is my favorite, but it's kind of up to your personal preference. It also comes down to price, as I'm sure there's going to be a lot of pretty heavily discounted XPS 7590s out there compared to the new Dell XPS. And keep in mind the speaker thing, because if you plan to do anything that requires this laptop to play something from the speakers, I would definitely get the new one, even if it's a little bit more expensive. Like I said, if you only do your work with headphones, oh, speaking of headphones, these are the Galaxy Buds Live, and I promised to give these away when I reach 500 subscribers, which we did in another video. So I'm gonna put up the name of the lucky person who won these. If this person doesn't reply to my messages, then I'll pick somebody else. So congratulations. So anyways, I hope you found this video informative and maybe it'll help your buying decision if you're deciding between these two laptops. If you have any questions about them because I still have them, you can let me know down in the comment section below. And thank you in advance for hitting that like button and I'll see you in the next video.